Hey guys, Richard Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review the Ambernic RG20AXX handheld video game console. So we'll take a look at what this offers in terms of layout and design. We'll tour through exactly what is included on here, ready to go, plug and play. And then of course, we'll test out what is included on here to see if it handles everything effectively or not. Let's dive into it and get started. All right, guys, here is the Ambernic RG20AXX handheld video game console box. We'll go ahead and just take a look at it. Very nicely laid out and it looks like we have the black version i assume it's actually uh looks like somebody put a marker on there to kind of check it so i assume it's the black one but let's go ahead and open this up so we do have a micro sd card here dropping out from underneath the lid 128 gigabytes i assume this is what we're going to have to insert into this in order to get our games and os pulled up so i will say this is a generic 128 gigabyte micro sd card just worth mentioning there, it's not SanDisk or Samsung or anything like that. So yes, it looks like the black version of this. I'm gonna set this aside. Let's see what accessories are included in here or cables, etc. So it looks like we have our user manual right here. Go ahead and open this up a little bit. Walks through uh, just basic information here. Also goes through all of your buttons and ports on here. We'll flip this over. So it's in a couple different languages. We'll go ahead and close this up. I'll reference this if need be. Over here we have our charging cable, it looks like. Let's see what we have. I imagine it's a type C to either USB A or another C. Let's see. Yep, USB A to USB C. So the C is going to connect into the actual handheld. USB A, you can plug into a laptop, you can plug it into a computer, power outlet if it supports USB A connection. So go ahead and drop that in there for right now. Hopefully it came with enough charge to actually get started today. All right, here's the actual handheld. Wow, very, very, very petite. Let's see if we can just wipe that off. Actually comfortable to play though, or at least the buttons are responsive. It seems pretty, pretty straightforward here. Um, but yeah, very, 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 very small. Um, I was expecting this to be a little bit bigger than this. I knew it was going to be a compact handheld, but I was expecting it to be I don't know, maybe a, a third of the of the way larger than it actually is. This is a three inch IPS screen. We have four button configuration over here, A, B, X, and Y. D-pad over here on the left hand side. And then we have start and select. Right here we have our speaker, which I will say, I'm not crazy about the placement of this just because you notice how when I put my thumb down, it's literally going right over that speaker. So do we have speakers anywhere else? It does not look like it. So that could become a problem with the audio you know, kind of getting distorted or uh, muffled because literally my my finger and or thumb rather is covering that up pretty much completely there as I hit the uh, B button, which would be the button that we're probably hitting the most, A or B. Uh, B definitely covers it up pretty much entirely. A, not so much. X, a little bit, but you're not tight against that. But yeah, that, that B button definitely has you pressing right into the speaker there. So uh, let's take a look up here at the top. So we do have shoulder and trigger buttons. Um, kind of awkward to get to those shoulder buttons there. Trigger's not so bad. Good action on them though, but yeah, it's a little bit difficult to actually reposition over here to where they are. They're right, literally right on the corner. You can see they wrap around the corner in fact. So good action, but a little bit awkward just reaching those. Now we also have a mini HDMI port here. So you could go mini HDMI to regular HDMI and bring this over to a TV or monitor. So that's pretty cool. We have also a menu button. I believe that's menu anyways. And then we have our DC OTG. And that is going to be how we actually go ahead and connect this over uh, to that power supply cable that we just took a look at. So other than that, pretty straightforward. There's no ridges on the back to kind of give you extra grip. Sometimes it's nice to have those, even if it's just a rubber patch back here, or sometimes they do those grooves just as somewhere to rest your fingertips for, um, you know, just supporting this and keeping it from possibly sliding out of your, out of your grasp. But uh, D pad does seem to be pretty responsive. It is a very small D pad on here, but all in all pretty good. Now down here, we have two micro SD card slots. This one has a micro SD card in there um, and they have been, I've noticed this with Ambernex products lately, they're recessing these in a lot more than they used to, which is a good thing. You don't want to dislodge those or eject those during gameplay. It will almost always end up, if you do it a couple times in a corrupt card. The downside is you pretty much need a tool to eject those. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab just a pen. Well, I found a screwdriver instead of a pen. And all you have to do is just simply tap that and 
simply ejects. So we have a 64 gigabyte micro SD card in there currently. And then we noticed that we had that 128 that was included here separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. We'll just go ahead and insert that into micro SD card slot number two. Just press that in and you should hear it click into place. So that's pretty much everything that this offers externally. It's, it's a very basic setup. And of course, I actually didn't mention this before, but volume is on the left hand side. So we got a plus and minus and it is recessed in quite a bit as well. So you do have to press that pretty hard to make those volume adjustments. And then over here we have our power and reset button. So I'm going to hold the power button and we're going to fire this up. We'll see what's included on these micro SD cards and then we'll test it all out. All right, guys, so here we are loaded up into the RG28XX. So we have, as we land in here, we have two different sections actually for each of the micro SD cards. So if you have the 64 gigabyte, you're gonna have your game rooms as well as your RetroArch uh, game sections. And if you have the 128 gigabyte version as well, you're gonna have both of those for that one. So if we were to select these, actually before we do that, I'll show you guys, we have the favorites section here. We have our history that's gonna pull your recent games you've jumped into. We also have the search here. So if we actually jump into search, you can search for your favorite title. So if we typed in like Indiana Jones, for example, you can see over here, it starts populating in the list. And we have Indiana Jones and Last Crusade in here four different times. That's because there's multiple versions of it. Um, but we'll back out continuing on. We have the app center over here and we also have settings. And this is where you'd actually go in here and you could adjust your backlight brightness. You could adjust date, time, language settings, retro arc settings, icon settings, background settings. And if we scroll all the way down, this is how you'd actually reboot or shut down as well. So you hit shut down and confirm it with yes. That's going to be the safe way to actually shut everything down. So we'll back out of this. Now I want to show you guys what I was showing you before. We have our game sections here. So obviously we have game rooms and we have have RA games and you're going to be able to select which micro SD card you enter into for each of these. So basically, if you have two micro SD cards like I do, down here we have the 64 gigabyte and the 128 gigabyte, you're gonna have essentially four different game lists. And there's gonna be a lot of crossover uh, on here as well. But let's go in here to the first one here, which is game rooms. If we jump in here, you can select between micro SD card one, which is the 64 gigabyte, or two, which is the 128 gigabyte. So we'll go into the 64, we have PS1 in here, vertical, arcade, Capcom system one, two, and three. We have Neo Geo, FB Neo, MAME. We have Game Boy Advance, NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Sega 32X, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, as well as PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Game Gear, and Wonder Swan Color. So you're going to have the same thing over here if you went into TF1. You're just going to have more titles. So PS1, for example, 137 titles versus... Uh, just 29 titles. So massive difference. And that's where you're going to see the majority of your difference. Um, Capcom system is going to be identical regardless. Vertical arcade over here, we have 154. Over here, we have 154 as well. So those are comparable. Neo Geo, 99 there. 152 over here. So oddly enough, um, Micro SD card one, which is the smaller capacity, has more Neo Geo. And that's probably because micro SD card two over here, the 128, has made more room for PS1. So it's a trade off here. Uh, we're going to have a much larger collection for MAME um, as well as FB Neo over here on micro SD card slot two. Whereas FB Neo here has only 473, MAME has only 493. So we're getting a lot more over there in micro SD card slot two. Again, the 128. Um, NES over here, we have 432 over here. We have 679. Now, mind you, I want to point this out before I forget. There's no Mario titles in here, which is going to be, um, unfortunate for the majority of people. I will also say sometimes these are not in alphabetical order, uh, or the alphabetical order sort of jumps around. Like we're seeing now we have Z and X titles here, whereas minutes ago, seconds ago, rather we were in the A titles. So kind of all over the place, but yeah, it's unfortunate that we do not have Mario titles in here. Uh, and I think we can all figure out why that is, but same could be said for Super Nintendo. So here we have 1,099. If we go to the smaller capacity card, we're going to have much less than that. 
we have just 429. So yeah, you're going to see major differences there with your um, with what micro SD card you're using. But if you have both like this, it's nice. You can get the best of both worlds, but there's a lot of crossover, obviously. Uh, let's back out. Now, if we go into the RetroArch game section, you're going to have the same thing. You can switch between micro SD card slot one or two. So we'll go into the smaller one. And over here, you're going to see PSP. You're going to see Open Board. You're going to see Dreamcast. And then the rest of this, you're going to see a lot of the same titles like FB Neo or a lot of the same, excuse me, um, collections. You're going to see Homebrew is actually a new one in here. Uh, MAME was in the other one, but you have it over here as well. Um, you're going to have Virtual Boy here, Atari 2600, Pokey Mini in here, Pico. Um, all of those are different from the other section. And you're also going to have MSX. You're also going to have a Thomas Wave and Naomi. You're going to have ports and you're going to have apps. So, yeah, it, it's another kind of confusing way to access more titles. But uh, let's take a look at PSP. So over here we have 11 games for PSP and they all are uh, full PSP titles. They're not PSP minis, which we do see sometimes with setups where they're trying to pad the numbers. So it's nice that they're not trying to do that here. We have Tekken 5 in here, which is one of my personal PSP favorites. We have Open Board with just eight games. Dreamcast, you're gonna have 12 games here and we've got Cosmic Smash. We've got Crazy Taxi 1 and 2. My all-time favorite game, Gauntlet Legends. We've got The House of the Dead 2. We've got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in here, Power Stone 1 and 2, Silent Scope, Soul Calibur, and Virtual Tennis, another one of my favorite titles. Now, this is, again, all on the micro SD card slot 1, the 64 gigabyte version. PlayStation, you're going to have just 29 titles here. So if we go over to the second one, the much larger capacity, we have 20 titles for PSP. We have... Uh, nine titles for Dreamcast, so that's an interesting one where there's actually some different titles here, but not a major difference in terms of game count. PlayStation, though, 137. So, yeah, it's kind of all over the place, I'll be honest with you guys, in terms of what's offered. Atari 2600 has 593 games. Virtual Boy has 23 games. Uh, v Arcade, which is vertical arcade games, has 154. MAME has 1,392. So this is comparable from RetroArch over to the other game uh, selection. But, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of all over the place with these four, essentially four different collections of games where there's just massive crossover from one to the other. Game Boy Color, 405. Game Boy Original, 729. Uh, game Boy Advance is up here with 947. And this is all on micro SD card slot two. But the game numbers are different if we go out from RetroArch and we go into game rooms. So you really have to comb through all four to find exactly what you're looking for. But do remember that Mario is not on here. There's no Mario games on here, but there's some Kirby games. So it's kind of a weird, you know, um, trade off there, I suppose. There's also no Donkey Kong anywhere on here. So I was looking for Super Nintendo's Donkey Kong Country, one of my favorite games. That is not on here. You can, of course, add those titles yourself, but unfortunate that they are not provided for you. But let's jump into some games and test out the performance on the Ambernick RG28XX. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, guys, we jumped in here. We checked out the Amber Nagarji 28XX handheld, and man, this is super compact. Really small, much smaller than what I was anticipating. I mean, take a look at it in the palm of my hand. It's pretty much the size of the palm of my hand. So with that, I'm obviously concerned that buttons aren't going to function as well, because when you make things smaller, usually the functionality decreases considerably. I was also concerned with the audio because of the placement of the one single speaker on here. When you're hitting the B button, which is the button, let's face it, you're going to be hitting the most with all the games that are included on here. Your thumb pretty much covers up that speaker 100%. Now, what I didn't notice initially was it does taper down right here. So even when your thumb is hitting that B button, you're not sealed up completely over that speaker because the speaker goes with the taper of the handheld. So it actually didn't distort or muffle the sound at all. So that was definitely a concern that was, you know, cleared away when I jumped into games. So really happy with that. Buttons function beautifully on here. There's no binds. They're really comfortable, great action on there. They're, they're sitting at the perfect depth on the actual uh, handheld. And I also love the D-pad here, which sits pretty high from the surface of the handheld. And what that does is it just gives you great action and you can feel your way through these games. Usually when I'm starting out with a new handheld, I kind of have to look at it, get my bearings. I can just feel exactly where everything is on here perfectly. Very easy to navigate your characters and games. So I was really happy with that. Now I talked about the shoulder placement of the shoulder buttons here. Not crazy about that because if I'm playing here and you can see, got my thumb on the G pad, thumb on the A and B. Uh, buttons over here on the right hand side when i do have to go and hit a shoulder button i have to totally reposition and it does kind of pull me away from where i am on the actual handheld here with buttons and d-pad so it's it's definitely awkward there hitting the shoulder buttons however the trigger locations are really good they sit really high up uh, on the uh, surface of the handheld as well so great action there really happy with that but yeah the shoulders not not too uh, crazy about the placement there at all you also have the HDMI, it's a mini HDMI port on here, so you can connect this up to your TV or monitor. It performs extremely well that way as well. I didn't show that here in the video, but definitely connects very easily. Literally just connect it. It's gonna pick up the feed and bring it right up on screen. Uh, downside to that is obviously you have a wired connection now to your TV or monitor, but if you're sitting at your desk, something like that, it is pretty convenient to use. I don't think that I'd necessarily use it on a TV, you know, in like a living room sort of, um, set up or something like that. I think it would just be too far away or it'd have to have a super long mini to regular HDMI cable to do that. But, you know, for intermittent gameplay at a desk using a computer monitor, it works really well. Um, start and select, obviously not much uh, to consider there. They work very well. But let's talk about the performance of this and the games included. So this sails through everything on here quite well. PSP, you know, some, some titles are going to give you uh, a harder time than others, but all in all, it was a good experience. Dreamcast, wonderful on here. Uh, I think they did a great job of picking titles that are going to work with this as well. I can't say that every single Dreamcast title is going to be a good experience, but what I tested out with what is included on here was a good experience. Same with PlayStation. So you can get a great experience out of this. Some of those more demanding collections, though, 
or games that belong to those collections, they're not great for playing with just the D-pad. Like some Dreamcast games, some PlayStation games, just don't really translate over well to just using a D-pad, not an analog stick. It's gonna be personal preference there, but like um, playing Crash Team Racing, it was a good experience. It performed extremely well, um, but it's, it's a little awkward to use a D-pad for navigating and steering rather than analog stick. In my opinion, it's just a different experience, but for an on-the-go convenient, you know, handheld sort of gaming experience, it's not the end of the world, but worth mentioning nonetheless. Um, now let's talk about the games that are included on here. It's a great plug and play setup. I'm not crazy about the fact that we have essentially four different collections that you have to navigate separately here. So you have two micro SD cards, the 64 gigabyte and the 128 gigabyte. And each one of those has two separate sections. You have your retro arc and you have your, I believe it was called game room. So you have two different sections on each of those four in total. It does make for a lot to comb through. I mean, this video is kind of long because of that. We're going through four sections that are more or less the same. I don't think that anybody would really navigate over to that 64 gigabyte section or card rather than the 128 just because it's a smaller collection, but there are some differences in the games included. That being said, there's one major issue with the games included on here. There's absolutely no Mario titles. I think we all know why that likely is. However, there's Kirby titles. There's no Donkey Kong titles. Um, so it's, it's kind of hit or miss there with the Nintendo selection. You can obviously add your own games in here, and you probably should do that. So this is a starting point. It's not the end all and be all. You can obviously improve upon this. You can remove games, add your own games. But in terms of a plug and play option, you're probably going to want to do some tweaking there because who doesn't want to have at least some Mario titles on their handheld, especially when it performs as well as it does. It's a no brainer there. So again, I understand why they're doing it. However, if you're going to take that approach, Obviously, you're not, you know, you're not in the clear because you have Kirby on there. You do have some key Nintendo titles. You just don't have the most popular ones. Uh, and some collections for Sega don't have Sonic. But if you go through there, you can locate Sonic. It's just they're not in every single collection. Like Genesis didn't have Sonic titles. Master System did. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little awkward with what's included and what isn't, but again, you can make the experience your own by adding and removing titles and customizing what is here. So now, would I recommend this handheld? Yes, absolutely. It definitely has some really great performance, and it has that smaller scale if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for a much larger handheld, then go with the RGB20SX over this. They're going to be comparable in price. Obviously, prices fluctuate these days on what sometimes feels like a daily basis. But for the 128 gigabyte version of this, you're going to be paying about $79, which is the same price for the Ambernic RGB 20SX, which is much larger. We're talking about a three inch screen versus a four and a half inch screen. So I would definitely navigate people in that direction if you're looking for something a little bit larger. But if you like the portability of this and the smaller scale, this definitely is a solid option for you. So definitely consider your options. You can click the link up here at the top of your screen or in the description of this video to learn a little bit more about what this handheld has to offer, what the current price point is, and all that good stuff. But that's going to do it for today. Let me know what you guys think of this handheld in the comments of this video. Do you like the smaller scale? Do you like the performance associated with it? Let me know in those comments. That's going to do it though. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. And if you enjoyed the content today, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.